Hey folks, I want to dive a little bit deeper into one of the stories that we covered a couple days ago. It all surrounds the Laurentide Ice Sheet, in fact several of the ice sheets uh, from the last glacial period. Now what's interesting is they were able to look at the bottom of the ocean and a couple other places and critically measure the sediment deposition during these events. Now what's really interesting is they said that the only way that this makes sense to them is if there was sediment, dirt, mud, grass, trees, other things like that, spread throughout the iceberg. And I mean throughout the iceberg. And of course, this confuses them because we don't see any icebergs, glaciers, ice sheets today that match that description. And of course, despite some of the way that this uh, paper was describing it, there's no reason to think that the ice sheets it, during the last glacial maximum had uniform sediment distribution throughout the entire uh, ice block either. So what's the other explanation for how you get this kind of sedimentation that would trick them into thinking that, oh, well, there must have just been dirt and mud and other things like that throughout the ice? as they broke off and into the ocean? The answer is that it wasn't as slow of a process as they are imagining it to be. It's much more what you observers have been hearing more about these rapid events that not only break off the ice and, and move the, the, the ice sheets in huge blocks, but they bring the sediment with them. You know, if they're just one breaking off here and there and it's only at the coast, it's really hard to come up with an explanation other than, oh, well, they must have been full of sediment. But if that's not how the ice melted, if it melted much more dramatically, as we talk about on the 6,000 year events, the Heinrich events and the disaster cycle, then all of a sudden, okay, you start to get, you start to get a little bit better of an explanation for the sedimentation that we see. Um, you can also, if you watch Doug Vogt's videos, think about his um, uh, deep sea canyons right off the coast. The mon uh, modern mainstream says that those are formed by turbidity currents, which makes absolutely no sense. They don't do enough to carve, and in fact, they deposit as much as they carve, if not more. And so those deep sea canyons off the coast really are the massive runoff from titanic flooding, whether that's massively melting ice or the oceans invade, uh, invading the continents. And both of those explanations, not the one that they made up, which they even admit doesn't really make sense to them and doesn't match anything that we see in the modern world. Those two explanations, either the massive melting, rapid melting of these ice blocks or the tsunamis that occur when the oceans invade the continents. These are the only ways you can actually realistically describe and explain the sedimentation that they are actually seeing. So this paper published in a pretty good AGU journal, but very much with its head in a box. And the clue is their explanation requires something that we don't see at all. And which they can't model at all, and which doesn't actually even make sense. That massive ice accumulation somehow gets dirt and mud all throughout it. The much better explanation is the catastrophe scenario. Anyway, just thought I wanted to add a little bit more detail and importance and rationale for why we chose this paper. Uh, it really does help give us a little bit better of an idea of what was going on during these 6,000 year cycle Heinrich events and uh, what we should be expecting when the next one comes in uh, the next decade or two. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.